The Incredible Hulk, a TV series from 1977, follows the story of Dr. David Banner, a scientist who transforms into a green giant, the Hulk, when he gets angry. This transformation happens after an experiment gone wrong. The show mixes action with heart as we see Banner on the run, trying to find a cure while helping people along the way. As for my favorite role, it's hard to pick just one because each character brings something special to the series. However, the dual role of David Banner and the Hulk stands out because it shows two very different sides of the same person. The contrast between the calm, intelligent Banner and the powerful, raging Hulk is fascinating. One scene that sticks with me is when the Hulk saves a child from danger. It's a powerful moment that shows the Hulk is not just a monster, but has a kind heart. Now, I'm curious about your experiences. What is your most treasured memory related to the Incredible Hulk? Did you have a favorite character or a moment that stayed with you? Share your stories and memories in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, folks say old Isaac's crazy in the loon. Yeah, but it's his home to me. Growing up, the television series The Incredible Hulk was a source of entertainment that my siblings and I thoroughly enjoyed. The show's appeal lay in its simplicity, particularly the transformation of the Hulk, who would become enraged, turn green, and unleash his strength. Watching the pilot episode decades later, the show reveals a depth that was not apparent to us as children. The lead actor, Bill Bixby, delivered a compelling performance as Dr. David Banner, a character driven by personal tragedy and scientific curiosity. In the story, Banner's quest to understand human strength in the face of crisis leads him to a risky experiment with gamma radiation, setting the stage for his transformation into the Hulk. The show cleverly pays tribute to classic monster tales while also exploring themes of anger management and the consequences of unchecked power. Despite some dated elements, such as the overdubbed dialogue of Jack Colvin, the series remains a memorable piece of television history. Susan Sullivan's brief but notable appearance adds to the show's charm, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. Overall, The Incredible Hulk stands out as a show that captured the imaginations of many, leaving behind a legacy of the timeless struggle between man and the monster within. You see, you're not like other people. You don't feel like other Lou Ferrigno became a household name for his role as the green-skinned giant in the popular television series. Despite skepticism about adapting a comic book into a live-action show, Bill Bixby, who played the lead role, encouraged critics to watch the show before forming an opinion. His commitment to the series was evident, although he missed filming one episode due to personal issues, with his character making a brief appearance without dialogue. Ferrigno's dedication was unmatched, being the only actor to appear in every single episode, solidifying his place in television history. In a notable episode, the reunion of Bill Bixby with Shelley Fabre brought a compelling dynamic to the screen. Fabre portrayed a young widow entangled in a murder accusation alongside Dr. Banner, a character she had not previously encountered. The storyline unfolded under the shadow of a corrupt sheriff and his associates. Separately, the portrayal of the Hulk was handled uniquely, with Bill Bixby remaining unaware of Lou Ferrigno's interpretation to authentically depict David Banner's amnesia regarding his alter ego's actions. Furthermore, the show's creator, Kenneth Johnson, took a creative direction by focusing on the character's personal struggles rather than adhering closely to the original comic book origins, setting a distinct tone for the series. I always take a man. Important business hat. Maybe manana. General Marina. Oh, Senior Hall. In a notable collaboration, Universal Studios maintained the film rights for a popular green-skinned hero for three decades, leading to the release of two major films. Actor Bill Bixby solidified his television career with this series, marking it as his third consecutive success on the small screen. Meanwhile, Charles Napier, known for his comedic cameo in a 1999 spy comedy film, would later take on a role that humorously echoed his earlier work in a 2008 movie with a title that played on the earlier joke. Of unloading, as with most of the other shipments, was Marty Hammond. In the action packed adventures of the Green Giant, the character's immense strength is showcased through his interactions with adversaries. Rather than resorting to punches, he opts to push or toss them aside, a decision rooted in the potential lethality of his power and the consideration for younger viewers. 
Meanwhile, Diana Mulder faced challenges with her lines during her time on another series, leading to the use of cue cards to aid her performance. Additionally, Dr. Banner shares a significant history with Dr. Elena Marks, tracing back to their college days and extending into their professional collaboration at the Culver Institute. I, uh, I'm sorry, I thought the nap was your husband. In an effort to create a more relatable lead, the show's producers opted for a significant change in the protagonist's name, choosing David over Bruce, which was relegated to a middle name. This decision was reflected in a poignant scene featuring the gravestone of David Bruce Banner. The series also had plans for further expansion with a new TV movie intended to follow the 1990 film, but the untimely passing of Bill Bixby, who portrayed the titular character, halted these developments. Bixby, who initially hesitated to accept the role, became the first choice for the part after familiarizing himself with the source material, ultimately securing the role that would become one of his most recognized performances. Oh, uh, well, he was just explaining about some of the wiring in the funhouse, that's all. In the heart of Chicago, Jack McGee pursued leads for the National Register, a tabloid competing with Limelight Magazine. The show first aired as a television movie on CBS, capturing viewers on a Friday evening. It secured a weekly slot the following year, post Wonder Woman, and later returned to its original time. Its narrative drew comparisons to The Fugitive, resonating with audiences until its conclusion in 1981. He saved your neck. All I'm asking for is a little help with pay. On set, the intensity of the role sometimes proved overwhelming. Lou Ferrigno, in full Hulk makeup and costume, once left the set in frustration, inadvertently causing a minor car accident when a driver caught sight of him. While the character is known for his lack of footwear, Ferrigno often donned green slippers during outdoor shoots for protection, a detail particularly evident in the New York scenes of terror in Times Square. The show faced an uncertain future in 1981. Despite decent ratings, CBS was ready to drop it. Kenneth Johnson's efforts to continue the series were met with refusal from CBS's Harvey Shepard. Attempts to find a new home for the show failed, leading to an abrupt end without a proper conclusion, leaving the storyline of David Banner's quest for a cure unresolved. Right through our security system, and gone, and vanished, vamos! And we can't even open that, that, that thing. To In the world of television and wrestling, a unique crossover occurred when Lou Ferrigno, known for his role as the Green Skin Giant, shared the screen with wrestler Terry Boulder. Boulder, standing taller and larger, earned the nickname Hulk from his friends, leading to the legendary ring name Hulk Hogan. Ferrigno's own journey was inspired by his childhood admiration for the 50s Hercules movies and the comic books of the Green Hero. His passion led him to portray both Hercules and the animated version of the character he admired. Meanwhile, Charles Napier, who lent his voice to the same character, had previously appeared in Star Trek, a path later followed by Eric Bana, who played the scientist turned green behemoth in a film before joining the Star Trek universe in 29. I can show you how. Go ahead. Lou Ferrigno stands as the sole surviving cast member from the classic series, following the passing of his co-stars Jack Colvin and Bill Bixby. The distinctive growls that accompanied the Hulk's on-screen transformations were voiced by Charles Napier. Despite rumors, Kenneth Johnson, the creator, confirmed that a conclusive finale was never produced due to the show's unexpected cancellation. He did express a desire to create a final episode where David Banner would find a cure for his transformation into the Hulk. This closure, however, remained unrealized, leaving the series with an open ending. Won't you? To get what you want, no matter what side of the law they're on. First me and then Cam Chong. You both received the agreed upon services in... Dedication to preserving the show's magic was evident as Bill Bixby, who played the lead role, went to great lengths to avoid being seen with Lou Ferrigno in makeup, ensuring the illusion that they were not the same person remained intact. This commitment extended to evading the era's tabloids, which sought to capture both characters together. In recognition of his earlier work, Bixby received an exemplary service award in 1972. His fondness for collaboration was apparent through his casting choices, often bringing former co-stars onto the set. One such example is an uncredited extra from his 1973 series, who became known among fans as the Mystery Woman after her appearance in an episode titled Mystery Man.
In a unique crossover between fiction and reality, actors Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno stepped out of their television roles to promote Santos to Jeans in Brazil five years after the show's debut. This marketing move was a nod to the show's widespread appeal, which even caught the attention of Mike Johansson, who considers it his favorite show. Behind the scenes, Bixby faced challenges beyond acting. The white contact lenses required for his transformation into Dr. David Banner caused significant discomfort and an allergic reaction, a testament to the dedication required for bringing such a character to life on screen. Capulco, something about irreconcilable differences. Well, that's... In a display of real strength, Lou Ferrigno, portraying the Hulk, actually lifted a car during filming after a mishap with the special effects equipment. Exhausted from long hours, he channeled his frustration into the feat, which made it into the show's opening credits. Meanwhile, Diana Muldor, known for her roles as scientists in Star Trek, joined the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation with the stipulation that her character be named Catherine. This change led to a ripple effect, influencing subsequent casting decisions and other productions. Additionally, an interesting detail is the license plate on David Banner's car, which reads 823 PCE. When read backwards, it hints at an electromagnetic radiation tester, adding a layer of scientific intrigue to the character's journey. I think I could get someone to prepare an antidote. I don't know if there's time, but I've got to try. Two years after the popular series concluded, an interesting development occurred. Bill Bixby reached out to Nicholas Hammond, offering him a unique opportunity to don his Spider-Man costume once more for a crossover feature with the Hulk. Hammond was on board with the idea, but the project hit a dead end when Universal Studios pulled the plug, citing Lou Ferrigno's unavailability as the reason. This claim was later contested by Ferrigno, who stated he was never approached and only learned of the project while writing his autobiography years later. In another twist, 1986 could have seen Ferrigno take on a role reminiscent of the famed John Rambo. He was slated to portray a Vietnam War veteran in an action-packed film, showcasing his impressive physique. Unfortunately, this project was also shelved. Amidst these ventures, it's notable that Bill Bixby was already in his early 40s when he first transformed into the beloved green giant on screen. To, uh, to be able to, to tell someone that understands. Lou Ferrigno's unique journey with the character of the Hulk began with his silent portrayal in the late 1970s series. His physical presence brought the character to life without the need for words. Later, he lent his voice to the animated version in the 1990s, adding another layer to his association with the Hulk. His roles evolved as he appeared as a security guard in the 2003 and 2008 film adaptations, while also voicing the Hulk once more in the latter. Bill Bixby brought depth to the role of David Banner, becoming the definitive face for the character during the series' run. His casting was a deliberate choice, reflecting the creator's vision for the series. Charles Napier's career included roles in various superhero narratives, including guest appearances in Superman-themed television series, showcasing his adaptability across different comic book worlds. Just pick up your gear and get out of here, both of you. You're finished. When casting for the role of the Hulk, producers initially considered Arnold Schwarzenegger. However, he was committed to Conan the Barbarian and suggested Lou Ferrigno for the part. Critics welcomed the show warmly, with Starlog magazine highlighting it as a standout addition to television programming. Interestingly, while Lou Ferrigno portrayed the Hulk on screen, the character's distinctive sounds were provided by Ted Cassidy, known for his role as Lurch in the Addams Family until his passing in 1979. Subsequently, Charles Napier took over the vocal duties for the Hulk in the remaining seasons and subsequent films. But. When that sucker comes in, she's gonna go crazy like everybody else. She can't help. In his travels, the central character often forms significant bonds with those he encounters, parting ways with a heartfelt, you be good to yourself. This sentiment echoes throughout his journey. The narrative draws inspiration from classical and literary myths, notably in an episode titled after Prometheus, reflecting the tale of the figure who defied the gods by bringing fire to humanity. This mythological reference aligns with the character's creation, which was influenced by the Frankenstein monster, another being born of scientific ambition and societal isolation. The protagonist, a scientist, consistently adopts aliases that share his first name and begin with the initial of his last name, 
yet the obvious pseudonym David Bixby remains conspicuously unused, adding a layer of curiosity to his incognito existence. My name, it isn't Buster. Buster's a clown name. My name is Steven. Charles Napier showcased his acting range by portraying two starkly different characters in the Star Trek universe. In one, he played a free-spirited hippie, and in another, a stern general. Meanwhile, the series faced challenges off-screen. Bill Bixby, the lead actor, endured personal losses during the latter seasons, which affected his performance and the show's atmosphere. On screen, the character David Banner would undergo two transformations into the Hulk in most episodes, with the first occurring midway and the second at the peak of the episode's tension. These elements combined to shape the series' progression and its impact on the actors involved. Yes! Any word from the roadblocks? Not yet, but uh, the phone comes. In an era where superhero shows were gaining traction, one show stood out for its strong performance and positive reception, even earning praise from the character's original creator. The lead role was portrayed by Lou Ferrigno, a man whose physical prowess was not just for show. He was a two-time Mr. Universe winner. His casting was a result of his impressive physique and his personal connection to the character, having been a longtime fan of the comic series. Ferrigno's portrayal was more than a job. It was a source of inspiration for him, helping him to navigate personal challenges, including those posed by his hearing impairment. His dedication to the role and the series left a lasting impression on the genre and its fans. Explosive? Oh, come on, guys. What difference does it make how we got The difference is that somebody sick is causing an awful lot of trouble, and I... In a bold move reflecting the camaraderie of the cast, Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno threatened to leave the show if the producers went ahead with their plan to cut costs by removing the character Jack McGee, played by Jack Colvin. Their united front showcased the strong bonds formed during the production. Ferrigno's dedication to the Hulk extended beyond this series, as he was one of the few to bridge the gap between the original and modern adaptations appearing in both the 2003 and 2008 Hulk films. Meanwhile, Richard Keel, initially cast in the role, expressed relief when he was replaced. The physical demands of the role, including extensive makeup and vision impairing contact lenses, were challenging. Keel acknowledged that Ferrigno was the perfect fit for the part, bringing the right physicality to the iconic character. Just leave the keys with me and I can continue. Uh, no. Wait for me. Uh, um... Behind the scenes, Ted Cassidy lent his distinctive voice to the series, not only as the Hulk's growls, but also in the opening narration. His vocal talents extended to other animated superhero projects of the era, including Marvel's Fantastic Four and DC's Super Friends. In a tragic turn of events, Lead actor Bill Bixby faced personal loss during production when his son passed away due to a sudden illness. This heartbreaking situation led to a brief departure from filming. Bixby's professionalism shone through as he returned to work shortly after, continuing to deliver powerful performances despite his grief. His dedication to the craft was evident, even as he navigated the emotional challenges that came with the role and the production's demands. In the landscape of television, unexpected moments often become memorable. Such was the case with Diana Muldor's character in Elle, a law whose surprising romantic entanglement became a notable television moment. Meanwhile, Jack Colvin's initial reaction to his role shifted dramatically after reading the scripts, showcasing the potential for a show to defy expectations. Additionally, Diana Muldor's earlier television work intersected with music history as an episode she appeared in was featured in Pink Floyd's album, linking television and music in an unusual crossover. In the world of television, unexpected pairings often lead to memorable productions. Such was the case when Ken Johnson, known for his work on action-packed shows like The Six Million Dollar Man, and the bionic woman took on the task of bringing a comic book hero to life on screen. Despite not being an avid comic book reader himself, Johnson's previous experience with superhero elements made him a suitable choice for the job. During the show's run, the lead actors, Bill Bixby and Jack Colvin, developed a real-life friendship, contrasting with the on-screen tension between their characters. This friendship, however, faced challenges as their characters' rivalry limited their public interactions, causing both actors some frustration. 
Years after the show ended, Lou Ferrigno, who portrayed the titular character, donned the green makeup once more for a commercial in Canada. This 2001 appearance for GF Investments showed the lasting appeal of the character and the actor's strong association with the role. Word is out that you had unexpected company. <laughs> King. Drawing from a rich literary heritage, the series weaves a narrative that echoes the dual nature of humanity, much like the classic tales of Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It introduces a relentless pursuit reminiscent of the fugitive, with a determined reporter on the trail of the misunderstood protagonist. This chase is a nod to the persistent Inspector Javert from Less Miserables and mirrors the comic book's General Ross, who is fixated on capturing the Hulk. Each episode begins with a subtle nod to the protagonist's struggle as the word anger prominently transitions to danger, symbolizing the fine line between the two emotions. Meanwhile, Diana Muldor reflects on her contrasting experiences with different casts, expressing a sense of camaraderie with her LA law colleagues while recalling less favorable memories with the crew of Star Trek The Next Generation. We're trying to cover a real story here. In a notable turn of events during 1980, the production company faced budgetary constraints that led to considerations of reducing special effects and limiting the Hulk's appearances to once per episode. They even contemplated introducing a new character who would accompany David Banner in a motorhome. These cost-saving measures were ultimately not implemented thanks to additional funding from CBS which allowed the show to maintain its production quality. Charles Napier, an actor with a rich background, served in the army in Germany before pursuing an education in art and becoming a teacher. His journey took him from a family of tobacco farmers to the screens of Hollywood. The series experienced a temporary replacement by the show switch in the spring season. However, it returned for a final set of 10 episodes in the summer before the series was officially canceled. The last episodes marked the end of its broadcast journey. Man, this guy's poor. Jimmy, come on. In the wake of success, there was talk of expanding the universe with a new character, a female counterpart to the Hulk. This idea stemmed from the potential of a storyline involving David's sister who would undergo a transformative blood transfusion from him. While this plotline was never realized on screen due to the show's end, it inspired Marvel Comics to create She-Hulk, ensuring their ownership of the concept. She-Hulk's origin in the comics mirrors the unproduced storyline, with the key difference being her relation to Dr. Banner as his cousin. On set, punctuality was taken seriously, as reflected in an incident where Lou Ferrigno faced a firm reprimand from Bill Bixby for tardiness. This encounter left a lasting impression, leading Ferrigno to prioritize timeliness thereafter. The bond between Bixby and Ferrigno extended beyond the screen, enduring until Bixby's passing. Ferrigno credits Bixby with providing guidance and support akin to that of a mentor or father figure. He finally recalls the episodes directed by Bixby as standout moments in their shared experience. I was being fed into the computer when it broke down. That doesn't tell us anything. No, it sure doesn't. Listen, is, uh, is there any 